Hello here people of the internet, my name is Odur Jagero and this is Dialogues with Jagero. We are continuing our amazing series, The Pleasure Principle, episode 3. And we're going to be talking about hunger and body. <laughs> you know? This, there is, the other day I was in the office yeah. and this lady is telling me, Jagero, you look so indecent. Okay. I was having a track suit, a mm. grey one, mm. you know? Mm. And uh, I don't know whether she could see my dick or trudging, mm. you know? Yeah. And it got me thinking. Yeah. Uh, how men view it? Because, because for us, we see a lot, of, a lot of flesh from women these days. In 2024, right? Mm. We see a lot of hips. We see a lot of boobs. Mm. We see a lot of, of things out there mm. that... You know, mm. it gets hungry. Yeah. And our body begins to swell. Understand what I mean? Yeah, I do. You know? Yeah. So let's talk about hunger and let's talk about be uh, the body and let's talk about men. Mm. You know? Mm. You've had me talking about men, the male pleasure. Yeah. Mm. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to go back to this and talk about sex begins in the, in the body. And for men, sex is hunger, sex is energy, sex is excitement, sex is the way he gives love. Interesting. Yeah. What do you when, you, when, you, when you asked me to talk about sex, pleasure and the male mind, I just picked out six, six truths that I have had some women men talk about there in my practice um you know i've i've just like like i've, I've enjoyed um hearing men express um what they find sexual pleasure sexual excitement and sexual arousal while this is not um, general for all men uh, because again like I said we all have different sex personalities um, when we go deep in to delve into really who we are authentically what our urges are I like um, earlier one of your cameraman asked me um, would you be able to relate uh, what you're talking about with trauma and, and 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 I told him yes also communication has a lot to do with the things we don't say right so also our personalities could be developing over time and like i could say men like this men like that and then it's not true for all men so while that is not there majority of the men i find these six things hold true and i find they are misunderstood by women they are also miscommunicated by men um you see the way we talk about slut shaming with women i also find that men have been bashed about their sexual fantasies we have been slut shamed also you guys like hear the word slut shamed they don't use it but that's what it is yeah <laughs> or the man or something like that yes man -hole. yeah um but 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 men have been bashed maybe the word has not been used in marriage but in marriage there are certain things that men say they hear and they don't like that women um use against them and they wonder what they should use to express their urges, their fantasies, their desires, because for them, they want to talk about that. And so the male mind and the female mind are quite different, right? Um, I saw this one part that you're particularly more interested in, but I'll just touch you the other one. Uh, you know, the, the sex is hunger for a man, you know? Um, so understanding sexual pleasure for the man um, and, and how they communicate it and how they want to get it. If we understood it, we'd be able to have a better experience with men without having to feel like they're using us. Yeah. Yeah. They're here to manipulate us. You know, they get things like that. And then yet men think, I'm here with you thinking you also want this. They think it's reciprocated. They think I am a pleasure hunter and she's a pleasure hunter and we're all here to get it. Mm. It's not like that, you know. So th those are the six things that I picked out on and I thought I would share with you and the audience. Yeah, we are going to get uh, delve deeper, deeper into them. But let's talk about something that we talked about, I think, in episode one. Mm. Uh, the pleasure. Yeah. Because... We are told as children, mm. you remember the story I was telling you of a, of a teenage boy 
who doesn't who is having an erection and doesn't know what to do with his body yeah and then when you come to church you're being told don't do this don't do that mm. your mother is this is something that i will never forget mm. uh there is a pond close to our home you know mm. and uh i was next to that pond and I remember I was playing with my member. I wasn't masturbating. <laughs> I was just playing with it, looking at it. Yeah. You know, mm. digging it, mm. feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then this lady, I didn't see her. Yeah. Until she was very close. Yeah. And she found you. Yeah. Yeah. And she asked me, what are you doing? And she was very offended mm. that I was by the pond mm. touching my... My whatever, my weenie. Your penis. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I wasn't masturbating. I was yeah. just looking at it. But there's nothing wrong with that. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Boys start masturbating when they're two years old. No. That's the truth. We have a positive appreciation towards our bodies when we're young. Two years? Yes. Two, two years. years. Three years. Yes. Is, this, is this backed by scientific study? It is. They start touching themselves. That's how they start, um, you know, um, I, I, um, self-soothing, right? Um, finding satisfaction, reward, pleasure with themselves. Until they begin, now the whole conversation starts with, don't, that's bad. You're a sinner. You're wrong for it. Look at you. Bad manners. And then you start getting the wrong language for something that, that, that the is... Bad manners is the word that was used by the pawn. Yeah. You know, bad manners. You're going to be a rapist. Yes. You know, what, what are you doing? That's, 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 that's going to do this and this and this. Then they start looking at you what? as if they're, you're the one who's going to spoil all the what girls. What should she have done? Um, so I think I, I, what also I got around is that, or what we get is that the sex education, and, but what we lack is pleasure education. Yes. We're not taught about pleasure. We're not taught about health pleasure. We all have hunger for things. Pleasure is hunger, you know, for something. And we have it from when we are young. We yearn for our mother's nipple, you know, to suck our teeth. Sometimes we don't need the, the, the breast milk. We just want to feel some sort of pleasure and reward and soothing. We all uh, grow up when we are babies, we want co-regulation. You know, we want regulation from somebody else. And then when we start autonomy, we start finding that soothing within ourselves. So we start thumb sucking, we start... Is uh, that looking for pleasure? Yes, and soothing and reward. We start thumb sucking, we start it touching our nipple, rather our our um, our our cords. Um, some some babies you find them really touching themselves when you're touching when you're changing their diapers. They are playing with their with their you know with their private parts, and you find boys mostly are always playing with their penises. Um, so as mothers, I remember when I had I'm a mother of a thirteen year old, and when he was young. Um, we understood their bodies from when they are that young. So mothers are given that education so that they don't get surprised. I find some mothers don't have it, but it's true. So some mothers worry. They're like, oh my God, my son is touching himself. You know, I have a mother friend who also told me, you know, I find my daughter when she's on the pillow and then she's rolling over. And I thought she was a sinner. She was bad. I'm like, she's soothing herself. What you're trying to take away is her capacity to self-soothe. If you take it away, you're going to, you need to give her an alternative. So we had our own ways of finding pleasure. And that's how we know masturbation is not a bad thing. Self-exploration. It is a way of pleasuring yourself and rewarding yourself without having to depend on somebody else. It's how it takes us to how we see men and how they understand porn. They just want self-sufficiency. They, sometimes they just don't want to depend on somebody else to satisfy their own needs they find it easy it's sufficient it's quick and it's in, and it's exciting right it all comes from the capacity to auto regulate like can you find pleasure within yourself first before you depend on somebody else on the other hand we see girls learn to be codependent like their capacity to feel good has to come from somebody else so they do not know how to take care of their needs they phone they have to make you so happy so that you can make them happy which is wrong because anything that doesn't emanate from you is always going to feel second nature. It's always going to stop somewhere, right? Because then you're always going to be hungry and wanting too much. There's never enough that will ever satisfy you when it doesn't stem from you first. So you find that men find satisfaction faster than women.
mm. because of their capacity to auto regulate they know how to self soothe fast women most women not all want to they want to to co-regulate before self-regulation you know they want to come to you they want to cry and tell you what that you've done to them when they when you're holding them a man wants to go and first deal with that anger then he comes to you and then we say oh there were no emotions you know he was telling me as if he's emotionless because he first dealt with it now he's just giving information a woman wants to be emotionally connect which brings us to the understanding of the male mind and the female mind when it comes to sex mm. you know um women want to connect emotionally first for them to have physical intimacy men connect physically first for them to have emotional connection if you want a man to connect with you you need to first of all be visual give him the physical satisfaction right what does that mean it means so many things it means it's it means uh being um flirtatious it means um working on 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 different ways of role play it means using different kind of things on his body toys touch different aspects of touch it means communicating um to letting him communicate to you through touch it means allowing him to you know to spank you or to touch you or to cuddle with you or to be next to you right that way he will connect with you because one of the things we're going to look at is when men want to have sex with you they want to express their love you know they want to express what they feel they want to hear you express your sexual desire so that they can be able to go and and think of different ways in which they can win your love okay but then it gets misunderstood by the woman who wants to first hear she wants to hear you say you mean a lot to me you you i only have eyes for you 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 the one thing i've been thinking about the whole day i couldn't wait to get home she wants to first hear that before you can touch her so <laughs> this, is, this is i want to take a little two steps back yeah and then i'm coming back to this don't please remind me if i forget i'm yeah. turning, turning to this i'm coming back to this idea of women want to hear men want to you know mm. uh you talked about s s pleasure education mm. but so is it allowing them mm. to go mm. to go through pleasure or teaching them about it because i had what i had was allowing rather Thank than teaching even teaching because if 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 i definitely i don't want my baby boy to be touching his penis in public right but what in my understanding is that he wants to find there has to be different ways in which he can be taught how to self soothe so as a parent i start teaching different ways of self soothing you know we have the rocking chairs we have the the the, the you know the 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 furry clothes and then and the different textures that can be around them food they some of them want to sew through food um you know some of them want to be carried um it has to be touch yeah anything to do with touch soothes them and the soothing changes as they grow so if we don't give each other ways of soothing we are going to find wrong ways of soothing i'll tell you how yeah. so if a child turns let's say 13 and 14 now there's independence but also there's boundaries body boundaries you know before eight and nine maybe he could be touched by his mom and his dad there's a tickling you know rolling in the mud and the you know playing with the mom and falling you know playing on the carpet furry carpet and that's okay but then he grows to a place where now you want to start respecting his body you want to start showing him or teaching him how to respect his body i remember my son used to love tickling a lot and then he would want to go to the nanny so the nanny would be cooking and then he starts tickling her and i'm thinking okay he wants this but then now this is getting dangerous because mm. it's now eight and i need to start teaching body boundaries right uh, but then i need to understand the capacity that he's looking for soothing now there it gets misinterpreted or if we don't give them healthy forms of self of self-soothing he will now we hear the stories of you know your boy was molested by the nanny or he he found a way of being pleasured by the nanny right yes. because he was looking for something that now he he's, he he was not being taught how else to get it right so then when they turn 9 10 11 12 13 so yeah. their bodies are changing yes. now there's going to be every time they see they see something visually appealing or when they feel like they want to to express pleasure or they ex they experiencing pleasure there's going to be a body another body organ talking yes and this one they are not used to it Mm. right 
then they're going to feel stronger feelings because the more testosterone develops when they hit puberty from nine their hormones start developing right so the more they have a surge of testosterone the stronger the erection and the stronger the want for pleasure for reward right so then what do we do for the boy child at that age we have to give them information we have to strictly teach them about their body changes. The one thing we miss out on is we now start the don't, 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 as opposed to giving them the right information about the feelings. We need to sit down and tell them you're going to start feeling good things. Let's not call them bad. Yes. Some, some good feelings are going to well inside you, right? And you're going to want something. You know, you're going to want, you're going to want a reward. You're going to want a release. And there's nothing wrong with feeling what we need to teach is now the behavior so mommy what do i do about the feeling mm -hmm. then we need to ask what are the other ways in which i can satisfy my pleasure i can watch a good movie yep but that's not physical i can go and play basketball so that's why that stage we say let them get sporty because sports is contact if they play basketball if they play rugby if they you know they get to find ways of releasing tension because now there's touch, which is healthy. It is respectful of their bodies, right? And this release, they will not even understand how that happened, right? We also ask them what are some of the things that bring you pleasure. They will tell you they love food. And so you find that that state, they actually love food so much. They want to go and make an egg and make a burger and make something. Food rewards us. Yeah? And so we need to be able to teach them ways of finding pleasure. And we need to talk to them, tell me things you like, things that pleasure you. We are almost saying things that turn you on, right? And these kids will tell us they like, they like to maybe to watch a movie or to play a game or they like. And then we establish which is healthy, which is unhealthy. How do we drive them towards a healthy one? When we miss that conversation, that's when we start um, hearing these 12, 13 year olds going for VEP, wanting alcohol because then they don't know what to do with these feelings or emotions welling up into them so they look for wrong ways of distraction because we all need a distraction from the intensity of what we feel right we need to feel a reward for what we want now if we don't give them the right route they will go the wrong route or then they will find themselves now um you know uh, like making love to the person who is next to them i have so many stories of 14 year olds 15 year olds 16 year olds who they felt something when they're watching a movie and then there was a girl cousin you know sitting next to them and then they found themselves um making love to them and they didn't know what to do it was in the spur of the moment i i swear to you i didn't think about it i wasn't thinking it just happened you know things like that and then of course we'll if we use the moral stance we are going to bash them and tell them you have no sense of control and then the other thing of course is to train feel the emotion and then find ways of managing it so because if we don't express and we suppress it will become too much at some point and they will not have ways of handling it it will just be negative you get it mm. so communication and 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 a role of mentorship is needed around that age the men the older men the uncles the teachers they, the boys need support they need to be told the truth then the other thing i find which is sugar coated is the feelings the the sensation we don't talk so much about emotions because desire is an emotion. When I'm talking to boys about puberty, I tell them you're going to start feeling feelings you've never experienced. Some of them, you have no words for them. So we start talking about the language of emotions. We get the whole uh, wheel of emotions and I keep teaching them. So describe to me how you feel. They say, I feel good. Good has so many other words below it. I feel excited. I feel, um, you know, fantastic. I feel um, enlightened. I feel joyful. I feel all those emotions are under good. But if we don't give them an emotional palette, then they do not know how to say, I'm feeling really good looking at that girl. Mm. And it's okay to feel good. Talking right? about, to listening to you talk about that, it's very interesting mm. because, as for example, as a parent, I've always thought that some of these things you let the universe deal with them, you let nature deal with them. Mm. But I, the, the more I, we we have this conversation together, I realize that we can always, you know, uh, help the people that are around us, especially with children. Mm. You know, 
the other thing that I'm taking from the first part of this conversation is the idea of pleasure education. Mm. Uh, you know, looking at what is happening, mm. understanding it, mm. you know, mm. and dealing with it. Mm. And I think there are so many parents out there mm. that are at a place whereby they don't know what to do. They don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, it's just amazing. But I'm going back to, the, to what I told you about that was it at the back of my mind when the, the woman wants to be told things. Yeah. You know, mm. I was at work and oh gosh, I was just thinking about you. Mm. you know yeah and all those lovey-dovey stuff mm. right yeah and then the man wants the touch yeah once he's not he's not into talking mm. how then do we marry the two mm. how do we then begin to be aware of both mm. because women want to hear mm. and to be touched yeah yeah but then touch also is you misunderstood start, you start with the this because you see, I want to hear, but you don't know how to communicate. And yet your communication is through touch, physical intimacy, right? And let's say you want to make love to me as a way of showing me that you love me. You want to express your love, you know, through sex. Because men want to have sex to express love, right? But how does that come about? Um, men have most testosterone welling into them. It build up, builds up so much tension. So when they see, when a man sees his, his wife or, um, you know, a female figure, even a shapely figure for a man, even anyone talking about sex, usually those things spur emotions and thoughts and fantasies into a man's mind. And that's natural for them, right? But when testosterone starts welling up, their physical body talks fast. They feel it in their physical body. So the feeling, the sensation is in the physical body before they can think of what to do with it, before it gets to be, um, you know, translated into their mind. Okay. For the woman, they will want emotional connection. So emotional con connection is varied. It can be what you say to her. It can be how you talk to her, but also it can be how you touch her. Mm and how she responds to that touch now because now a man would prefer to touch to talk through touch right so when a man is coming to talk through touch he wants the hug when he comes from work he wants you to hug him he wants to hug you he wants to feel received when a man comes home he's hungry for dessert right in the hunger for dessert he's, he wants to come home he wants to feel supported he wants to feel soothed he wants to you know to to receive your service you know how you you know you soothe him and he gets that through touch i something is going on in my head as you talk about that yeah and i'm talking i'm taking you back to your country okay when you talk about man coming home yeah it reminds me of a of a, of a traditional ugandan woman yeah you know mm. and so the ugandan woman there is a way they they treat a man yeah and i think uh in 2024 that would be categorized under subjugation mm. you know yeah uh a woman kneeling down mm. and and receiving the husband mm. a lot of women in 2024 would frown upon it mm. say that you know do you think mm. that do you think it is total subjugation that women are looked down upon, Ama, mm. or this is, this, this, is there positivity in it? Um, well, at, at this from a culture stance, I don't like to water down other people's cultures, but yeah. it depends on who speaks or who is saying it. Yeah. Um, if it's not your value, then you're going to look down upon it. But when we look at how it was practiced in the patriarchal society, um, it's, it, it, the intention was not bad. The intention was, um, then there was the whole element of the masculine is the leader. The masculine is treated like this, but femininity is received like this, you know, because we look at masculinity is upward, femininity is rooted. So the masculine is up, the feminine is down. And then also we had, there was the whole element of teaching because there was no proper education around it. Women's emotional range is wider. She's been dealing with children and cousins and nannies and so many people at home. Yet when the man comes, he wants to find a quiet environment. He wants to find a regulated wife. He wants that. He wants to come and find soothing. He wants to walk into a warm, beautiful environment, right? So sometimes what I found personally is that when women kneel, it sort of like um, regulates them to being able to speak in from here.
because when they're speaking from here the man feels like it's a pitch tone and it's 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 it's, it's controlling it's dysregulated therefore he cuts off he doesn't because the tone of voice the body language um indicates whether the man is received at home or not so so i'm not I, saying it was the reason yeah it, the reason is culture the, the culture reasons are many it's one how you show respect to a man because men love respect so it was one way of showing respect to a man when you ask men how they feel when a woman kneels it's basically i feel respected as opposed to i feel like i'm the I'm, I'm, I'm the head. So what I'm hearing you talk about is that it is not really taking the power from a woman. No, it doesn't. Because I see some some sort of power, some um, latent power. Yeah. You know, p subtle power. Yeah. In a woman doing so. It's, 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 thank it's, you. It's a, it's, a, it, it's, it's the way she's approaching the whole situation. Exactly. You know? If it's forced, then it's manipulation. But if it's self-regulation, if it allows her to feel soft, because soft is power feminine energy is soft feminine energy is internal so if i've been in any situation where i was i was i was outward if i have ritual because i always talk about ritual for women i'm an alpha female um for women who are alpha females who also want to enjoy their feminine softness we have to have ritual we have to have small things we do that break us back into our softness Otherwise, you will just present yourself like that. So I could consider it as ritual, as a way in which she softens into her feminine power to regulate. Yeah. When you regulate your emotions, you have more power over the one who has come like this. I keep saying that women actually run the show in homes when they are softer than when they want to prove to be stronger. Because I can explain control explain. a man you're going to be having problems on some of these things you say no i'll be honest with you when a woman uses her softness she's more intuitive she listens she does not listen to respond right so when a woman regulates herself using whatever ritual so if for them kneeling is ritual because i found women who get into kneeling when they speak they will say something strong but with a regulated tone so what she's saying is actually powerful and strong, but it's regulated. Then I also find women who don't kneel, they're already here. What they're saying is so weak, but it's, it has so much anger tones. Right? Now when I see the both women, men don't listen to any heightened voice. They listen to a softer voice. Right? This softening happens um, when they have anything. It could be the breath that they use to soften. It could be the hugging of children that they use because men want to watch nurturance, right? It could be uh, the way the cooking of food that they use to regulate. There are small things that women need to know work for them. Everyone needs to have their go-to ritual that regulates them because I can sense that I'm pent up, I've been talking to people, I'm tired, yet I'm coming home and my husband feeds off a regulated me. So I need to have ritual. If one of them is to kneel, so be it for me. Now who are you to question it? If it's not what works for you, let's tell us what works for you because I find that really works for them. I find the traditional Baganda, because there's a tribe called Baganda. It's not all Ugandan women who kneel. There's Baganda in, in Buganda, right? Buganda Kingdom. Those are the ones who kneel. I find those women have more power over men. Those women own buildings. Their men start businesses for them. Those women are taken, sorry, those women are taken care of. Those women are not single mothers like I find in this community. They, they are not left alone. They don't have deadbeat dads. Those women have power. Do you know what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Soft you, is power. You are using softness yeah. and you're regulating your tone yeah. to speak about very dangerous things I in know. our community. I know. You know? Don't come for me. I come in peace. But soft is power. <laughs> if you just do your research that's what, the thing. what what you've said there that is very powerful to me is that those women mm. are never left alone never and they're given what they want they are taken care of their children are taken care of and they are actually not 
manipulated because I came here and women are saying you know those women who kneel they are too submissive they are too soft they're always beaten I've seen here more narcissistic relationships meaning there's codependence meaning that woman doesn't know how to express herself I have seen more women left alone I've seen more women buying cars paying rent and taking care of men and never knowing how to change the dynamic Mm. I've seen here married single women. Married? Single women. What does that mean? Meaning she's married but she's like a single woman. She's on paying school fees, paying rent, giving that man transport, giving, um, you know, um, buying food for the house and she's still married. And perhaps she claims that she has power. If she claims she has power and there's no sexual, there's no emotional connection. There would be power if there was emotional connection there. But it's not there. And I'm not saying it's what is I'm saying some or majority. So I'll be honest with you, I have found soft is power. Now, I hope that you're enjoying this program. Over the last 15 years, I have been working online for clients in America, in Europe, and all over the world. And that is why it pains me a lot when I see a lot of African brothers and sisters saying that they do not have a job. Now, this is the problem. A lot of people are trying to look for a job in 2024 in their own town, in their own country, in their local area. Now, the truth is there are no jobs in Africa, at least not so many jobs. The good news is that we have internet these days. We have a tablet, we have a computer, we have a phone. And that means that we can do a lot of jobs. And those jobs are online. That is why over the last four years, I've been writing a book that is called Digital Goldmine. It, it is a book that explains to you how you can earn money online. The 18 hustles that I've chosen are basically for Africans, okay? Because what happens when you are doing a, a online jobs is that payment is usually a problem. So these 18 side hustles that I have put together in this book, you can be paid very well and very conveniently okay so the book is only a thousand kenya shillings that is about ten dollars you can buy it in kenya using pay bill number you can buy it online from anywhere in the world using a credit or a debit card all the information about this book is in the description below just need to go to the description click on the link and you can buy this book and if you have a brother you have a wife you have a husband you have a friend who does who is sitting at home and watching netflix please do buy this book for them. If you are the one sitting at home and watching Netflix and have nothing to do, please buy this book and your life is gonna change forever. Because I have been doing this online and I've been traveling and I've been enjoying myself and having a lot of fun. So thank you very much. And now back to programming. Mm. Yeah. Soft is power. Feminine energy is power if they use it well because that's what they have inherently to use most and i'm not saying women don't have masculine energy they have it but when they tap into that energy and choose where to use it because mm -hmm. it's just about choosing where to use the energy and like i said having ritual to break the pattern of knowing where i'm going to go and use my masculine energy because i want to be hard listened to and i want things to run very fast and i know my children don't need that energy my husband doesn't need that energy. So it brings me to a point where a man, um, sex is hunger for a man. Is that the reason why some women are saying, uh-uh, that one doesn't talk, but that one is powerful. Yes. You know? Yeah. Even in work, in work environments, look at them. The subtle, quiet women listen more because femininity requires that you can listen decipher then use your intuition to respond when we are always just using our brains we miss out on the wisdom of our intuition so when you cannot listen chances are you're not going to be able to use your inner voice which you call the sixth sense and many times you'll be misled you'll be tired most, women, about the sixth are, sense. most women are struggling with burnout they're tired they you know because they're mostly rational they always using their brains less using their, in their their sixth sense or their intuition mm. yeah sex is energy sex is energy for a man yeah 
when a man has sex or when a man enjoys um daily sex daily mm, would you want how how often would you say is comfortable for you a week daily three times a day come on <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, daily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today you said you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, daily, three times a week, four. You know, if it were up to you, I'm very sure you've come in the middle, you know, with uh, your wife to understanding what works for her and what works for you. But if it were up to you. I think three, four times a week. Okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When a man has at least regular sex, um, he derives strength. The hormones that he's able to put off after every sex encounter leave him feeling satisfied and he has strength to be able to go and battle and deal with anything else he has to deal with. So men have this energy, this sense of satiety, you know, when they when they when they're enjoying more regular sex than when they are not. So sex is a source of energy for them. It's how they find the energy to go and deal with the world. When a man a man is not having sex, he's not releasing those hormones that give him that strength. So sex is energy, it's how a man refuels right and then it's hunger men don't look at sex because oh i'm hungry i want to eat no it's more of actually i'm craving i think i talked about it a little bit earlier you know it's more like a craving he looks he thinks of every sex episode like even if he's not going to have sex with his wife tonight and he knows he's going to have tomorrow he's already planning out the episode he's just fantasizing and thinking about the episode right and he's thinking of it in terms of um like a confection you know, he's not thinking of it as, as food. He's thinking of it as a craving, something that he wants to pleasure his 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 desires, right? And so he's thinking, is it gonna be creamy, um, silky, buttery, bittersweet? All those sensations play out in his mind. What is creamy sex? Tell me about it. I don't know. It's a feeling. It's a sensation. It's what you feel when mm -hmm. you're inside your woman, or when you're with your woman, or next to your woman. It's the things you may want to maybe feel. Maybe I know it with other words. Maybe if you want bittersweet, maybe you you probably want the the kinky bit. Maybe you want some pain. Maybe you want uh, pleasure and pain. Or oh, when you think of the creamy one, maybe you want you want some 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 I've some stocking. I've never been into say, pain pain sex. Oh yeah. I wonder where, how it's what 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 that means. Mm. Maybe I should try it out sometime. But I wouldn't know where to start. Where do you start with the pleasure and pain? Um, you can start subtly. You can start with playing with different sensations. Like you can start with playing with um, like 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 wax, mas um, massage wax. They are candles, massage candles. So it's more like heat on the body. It's, it won't burn you. It just stimulates a sense of ah. Yeah. And this is put on the back. Yeah, put on the back. It can be put around your stomach. You know, it could. You've not had. A, okay, I I recommend a candle wax massage. You know, it stimulates something. You could start with that. You could start with ice cubes. You could just roll ice cubes because it's it's coldness stimulates heat underneath. Yeah. It brings anything that makes you feel like that, right? Stimulates, um, um, opens your 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 sensations, your nerves. Mm. So you're able to feel better. Your orgasms are better when you're stimulated. Okay. So stimulation is good, and it's a bit of pain that creates that kind of stimulation that leads to better pleasure. So it could be a bit of biting, you know, like playing with the teeth where you're comfortable. I could play with your earlobes, could play with your nose, could be play with your dick where you're comfortable. Yeah. So it can be subtle. You can start subtly. You can start with a bit of pulling, you know. Pulling what? Nipples. She could pull your nipples a little bit. I have no nipples. You have small nipples on your chest. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pulling them. Yeah, with teeth. With the teeth. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it it could be that. It could be uh, putting some ice cream on you and licking it. It could be just using maybe some rough stones on your body when I'm massaging you. Or, mm. um, you know, you know that's that's a bit of pain because the stones sort of like feel like they are cutting you, but then they make they're stimulating you. Right? It's more a bit ticklish. It's even tickle. He's is a bit of pain and pleasure. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Do you go deeper? Um, so then deeper is now different ways when you use um, like a bit of needles. Needles? Yeah. You know, needles. To the one used in hospitals? That they are kink needles. <laughs> they are kink needles? Yeah. Ah, yeah. I can buy them from Jumia. Yeah. <laughs> no, from sex shops. Sex, sex toy shops. Mm. Yeah. You just go there and say I want needles? No. <laughs> They sell BDSM kits. Oh, BDSM kits. Yeah. I've had Matheka talking about BDSM, yeah. BDSM kits. There's BDSM kits. So they even have instructions. You learn their subtle ones, their advanced ones, their intermediary ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So apart from needles, what else? What, what, what their feathers. Their feathers. feathers now create the featherly, silky touch. Um, so their feathers, then their, their whips. Mm. You know, so the whips um, more like create, uh, you know, that whipping sensation, yeah. different levels of whips as well. There are ropes, you know, you could be tied to a bed and then you, you know, just pull up, up and down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or, so or tied on a chandelier. Yeah. Swinging on a chandelier. Or swinging on a chandelier or, wow. or you know, swings. They, they, they give a certain sense of pain and pleasure. Mm. Yeah. We'll be talking about the episode of uh, of kings and fantasies, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know whether we will we will ha we'll have a a kit. A bit about that. I will go subtle. I don't go in depth. Mm. Yeah, I will start with the intermediary one. Yeah. yeah. Then I'll leave you to the experts with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dangerous sport. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's okay for people to explore to find what works for them. Maybe Again, you, as long as it's you know, consent. You know, the, 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 something that I always wonder is that if you're getting somebody who is into those things and mm. then you are not into those things. Mm. Uh, the, the other reason why actually men also want to have anal sex because there's a bit of pressure, so much pressure in a smaller hole. So they feel a bit of pain and stimulation. It, it, it works for the men as well. Or more than because the women who love pain and pleasure now also want inner sex for that because it's a bit of pressure, pain, and pleasure. Mm, yeah, and all sex. Yeah, dangerous ground. Why is it dangerous? I don't know. <laughs> sex is sex is really wild. It's very wild. Wide. Yeah, it's wide. Up to now, I still research about it i still learn about it i still go for classes about it it changes the the dynamics change as people evolve you know it keeps changing now we have technology we are looking into technological sex so sex is why sexual urges are have not been delved into they were never allowed expression right so they're coming out more and when people talk about them without hiding while they are talking about them, it, the, you, you put them on the table. So, you know, there's consent, there's, there's discernment, there's choosing. Oh, I can try that. I'm not, I don't think I'm interested yet. Mm. And that's okay. Yeah. Sex is excitement. Yeah, for a man. Mm. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more about that one. It's a very exciting thing. Um, especially... When your mind is at peace mm. and you get a woman that you that is as beautiful mm. you know mm. when she has got the right boobs relatively but you like what you're seeing mm. the hips you like what you're seeing you know the hands i am i am attracted to hands of mm. women you know okay. just the hands yeah. you know mm. the way they look the way they talk mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's really exciting. Okay. You know? Well, think, there, are, there are so many bricks that we need to, to, to step to on. Mm. You know? Yeah. Because we're not allowed to fly. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's something that we don't... Um, also, we misinterpret with men. Um, sex is excitement for men. It's the most thrilling adventure. 
they find it to be the most thrilling adventure. Like I mentioned, uh, a male's body is a sexual organ, and there's, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure organ, and they want to enjoy it to its full throttle. They want to feel that they've enjoyed it completely. So um, any elements, you know, toys, um, shapely figures, anyone who talks about sex, um, you know, like watching their wives dress differently or role play, all those exciting things, you know, how the, the pain pleasure uh, principle uh, as well, um, you know, all those things, they want to hear them, they want to engage in them because they want to feel like they've, they've, they've engaged, they have enjoyed enjoyed their their pleasure body right is this the reason let's talk about the elephant in the room mm. the man liking variety yeah you know women are not very happy about it mm. Mm. yeah having one more than one yeah is it is it understandable do you want to do you want me to say that it's it should be okay that a man you know can be able to see more than one person i'm not asking i'm not welcoming you to accept that yeah uh i want you to talk about it mm. in whichever way you want i think um it's the expression of their desire that is so many times concluded by women because you see a man um like i said sex is excitement for them for them even porn even watching porn when they're not touching their bodies that's exciting for them being in a club where there are beautiful women shapely figures that is exciting but if a woman sees her man looking at a woman you are cheating on me you know i wouldn't look at it like that because a man is going to find anything shapely is going to excite him anyone talking about sex is going to excite him you know but at the end of the day he has different forms of expression if the final agreeable um, expression is that for now physical intimacy or the, the the penetrative sex you have it with me you need to understand that's what he will do with you but you're going to know that he's going to look he's going to see and he's going to be excited and we should not bash them for that mm. we should not we should just understand ourselves and leave them leave them to understand themselves so many times men say okay she thinks i'm cheating then i will go Right? Many times also we misunderstand a man looks at you and tells you, Doreen, you're beautiful. I find you have beautiful eyes. Then I misinterpret that for Jag is hitting on me. Mm. I think we're going to have something after this episode. That's wrong because I should allow you to express yourself and what you see. Right? Without me having to think, there's going to be an end game to it. Yeah. So the misinterpretation of the male mind and his excitement is what is causing most heartache in relationships. I see so many women complain, oh, I see him on social media, he's following his ex and following the other one. Oh, you should know, he emojis the fire emoji on some ladies, yet me, he cannot even tell me you're beautiful, babe. He cannot tell me you're amazing. He doesn't like my posts. And I'm like, what are you doing on social media? Leave these men to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they will see in one, way, one way or another they are going to see and it's up to them to limit how much they see because also them if they don't have control over where they are seeing depending on what they have at home then it's up to them but men are going to see so i'll tell women what what gives you pleasure what makes you connect to the man what brings you a sense of fulfillment find your other sports as well and play them stop looking out and investigating what is he seeing because you're not going to be the one who is before him all the time. He's going to see. Right? So I find that male excitement is misunderstood as he's going to end up having that. But does it mean he wants that at home? Yes. To him, sex is excitement. So we need to be very, very, very varied. We need to be able to be creative. He will want some, 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 something interesting. And like I said, maybe one day, you know, one moment have it in the bathroom. Uh, someday allow him to just come and be animalistic with you. Don't complicate things of, oh, I need foreplay. I need you to first touch me here, touch me there. He will want to know that it can be varied. It can be different all the time. He wants to feel the excitement. Mm. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think this was... <laughs> This, this this episode left me with a lot of things to to ponder you know questions and answered mm. you know 
we are not going to answer them in this episode. <laughs> you know, I think we are coming to an end of this episode. Yeah. Uh, the the three episodes have been amazing, and I can't wait for. We are going deeper, right? You want us to go deeper? In the fourth episode, we start going deeper. Okay. You Can know? you handle it? Mm, the last time that there is a South African woman that asked me, she's a friend of mine, yeah. that Jagiro, did you get turned on when this lady was talking? Oh, yeah? You? She did ask? She did ask, yes. Yeah, wow. Well. Uh, and then I asked her, were you turned on by my looks? <laughs> <laughs> Are you turned on by my looks? <laughs> because if you're thinking that he did something to me, what did it do to you? Yeah. You know? Mm. So, uh, I, I I want to handle it. Yeah. That's the thing. Okay. Because there is no going back. Mm. You know? Yeah. We do the episode or we go home. <laughs> we do the series or we go home. Yeah. So we I will talk to the people or we go home. Yes, I will yeah. suffer through it. Well, you do? I will suffer through it if it, it means suffering through yeah. it. Yeah, but I, I mean well. I, I'm, very sure, I'm very sure people people over imagine and they over imagine too much. things, and it's fine. Yeah, it's okay. If, if, our, if this episode is your king, yeah, then that's on you. It's okay. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jovine. I, I, I'm still struggling to pronounce your your second name, Nira but I would, I would really love to be using that one Nira because it's very authentic. It's very Ugandan. It's the it's where the spirit is. Yeah, you know, I was excited to read how people were actually going down to breaking my name down and where it could be coming from, who I could be. I've read through the comments and huh? it was yeah, yes. especially on YouTube. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, and I'm so happy that we're doing doing this together, and I'm hoping that people are enjoying it. I hope so too, especially you know? the second one and the third. Yes. Yeah. So, people of the internet, thank you very much for this uh, third episode, Hunger and Body um please do leave a comment uh like and please consider subscribing to this channel one thing about subscribing to this channel is that i can have more subscribers they're wonderful guests that i would like to get onto this platform mm. and the reality is that sometimes people look at your subscriber base and say oh. do you want to be here do that's i want to be here yeah that's you see? true yeah. so you subscribing is a mix a lot of difference yeah it does you see yeah because i had the same question as well you said i played hard to get you did yeah and then their love their conversation their feedback was 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 very good fuel for me to be able to come back and have yeah. this conversation because because you want to say so much to more people yeah so you don't have to keep repeating the same thing on this episode i want you to talk about a little bit of the services that you offer before we end okay um, first of all, people can reach me on Wellness Together Instagram. I'm more active on Instagram, Wellness Together, right? Um, I offer very many services. I I, I I do sexual education, sensuality. You ask me what's the difference between sensuality and sexuality. I want people to understand that now we have moved away from even just only teaching sexual education, rather sexual education, but also pleasure educating people about pleasure how to understand their bodies how to understand the other person and how to be able to enjoy each other be it alone or with somebody else so pleasure is a big thing for me so we have events called design desirability uh we have one like i mentioned coming up on the 9th of march and we are at radisson blue, at radisson blue come dressed in red strictly come dancing what are we gonna be eating there um the radisson blue food Buffet? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's a buffet. It's dance and dine. 9,500. 9,500. Mm. It's worthy experience. Beautiful experience. Sensuality. How long is it? it? Um, we start from 5 to 10 p.m. 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. So we take supper? There? Yeah, yeah. You have dinner there. And then there are talks? Of course. Intimate ones. You should come. Mm -hmm. And now I should be the one in this, in interviewing you. You, you, you want to interview me? Oh, yes. I would love it. You should. Just come with your wife and then dance with your wife. And then there will be other men we get to talk about. Uh, what are you essentially. interviewing me about? I will not let you know. Ah. Yeah. Okay. I want to catch you unawares. You look so good, shocked and surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a compliment, madam. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Mm. So, until another episode, bye for now.